you already know what a set is a set is a well defined collection of objects so let us consider a collection of pens this is a set because this is a collection of objects and it is well defined as it contains a red blue purple yellow and green pen so today we learn how to write a set that is how to notify a set so how can we denote this collection as a set we will learn this today so the set is usually denoted by a capital letter so i'll denote this collection of pens with the letter say p you can take any other alphabet which you want a b c or any other random alphabet the objects are called elements or members so what are the elements or members here this this so these pens are the elements or members of the set p the elements are separated by a comma so we we'll not forget to put commas here the elements are written inside curly brackets so we'll write these elements inside curly brackets so how to write a set first of all we will denote it with a capital letter then we'll call these elements as members of the set we will always separate them with a comma and we will write them inside curly brackets now suppose you have a set of pens p with you so do you have a purple pen in your set let's check yes we have a purple pen in this set so we can say that a purple pen belongs to the set p which you have check a red pen do you have a red pen in your set yes you have a red pen in your set so a red pen belongs to the set of p which you have so this symbol is used to denote belongs to is a member of or is an element of so the purple pen belongs to this set we will use this symbol to denote belongs to now what about a white pen do you have a white pen in your set or does a white pen belong to your set check no we do not have any white pen in your set what about a black pen do you have any black pen in this set no so we can say that a white pen or a black pen does not belong to the set p so we will strike out the belongs to does not belongs to is denoted by this symbol so this symbol refers to does not belong to is not a member of or is not an element of p like a white pen or a black pen or a pink pen is not a member of p now suppose you go to a store to buy a pack of pens the shopkeeper shows you these three collections of pens which set of pens will you buy well if i were to choose i would choose any one of the set as if you observe closely all these pens are the same in these sets check yourselves red pen we have it in all the three sets blue pen it is present in all the three sets similarly purple yellow and green pen is also present in all the three sets so you can buy any of the pens you can buy the pens and arrange it yourself it will not matter so a collection of pens can be arranged in many different ways say for example you can arrange this set of pen as the set p where the blue pen is kept first or the set h where the green pen is kept first or the set j where the red pen is kept first it is according to you so if it is a set then order does not matter you can arrange it yourselves now there was a coloring competition in a school 
where the student who uses maximum number of colors in his painting wins. So the student A used red, blue, yellow and green color in his painting. Now a student B, he was very clever. He also had the same pens but he used more of the same pen. He thought he would win the competition. So do you think B won the competition? No. The competition was a draw as B had used the same color but only twice. So using of the same colors but twice did not help B. Similarly, in a set, duplicates do not have any meaning or duplicates do not matter. So whenever we will write a set, we will remove the duplicates from the set and then write the answer. Suppose we have the set of pen N. You, you can see duplicates here. Yes, the red pen has a duplicate. So we will not write the set like this. We will remove the duplicate pen and then we will write the set in this manner. Similarly, the set L of pens, it has duplicates here. Red has a duplicate and yellow has two duplicates. So we will always remember to remove the duplicates. So remove them. Now we will write the set like this without any duplicate. So if a set then order does not matter. Say for example we have two sets A which has 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 and C which has 3, 5, 1, 4 and 2. You can see both have the same elements. Just the difference is that the order in which they are arranged is different but both have the same elements. So we can say that A is equal to C as the order in which the elements are kept does not matter. We also learned that duplicates have no meaning. So we have the set B here. See, it contains so many duplicates of 2. It also has one duplicate of 5. So we will write the set B as 3, 5, 2, 1 and 4. Now if you see the set D, it also has the same elements. Now again the problem is with the duplicates. Now if you look closely, B also has the same elements which B has. So B is equal to D over here. So sets are called equal if they have the same elements. Your B and D have the same elements. So B is equal to D. Let's take an example. A set L of letters in the word mathematics. Let's start writing. We know that we denote the set with a capital letter. So take the capital letter L is equal to open curly brackets. Let's start writing the letters of the word mathematics. M, we have to put commas, remember? A, T, H, E, M, A, T, I, C, S and close the curly bracket. Have I written this set correctly? Check it yourself. We have already learned that duplicates have no meaning so we forgot to strike out the duplicate and we wrote it with the duplicates itself. So we have highlighted the duplicates for you here. You can see that M had a duplicate, A had a duplicate and T also had a duplicate. So writing the set L of letters here is wrong. How will we write it? We will remove the duplicates. We will not write this duplicate again. We will write it as M A T H E M is already written. A is already written, T is already written, we will write I, C and S. So this completes our answer. We also know that order does not matter in a set. 
So if you wish, you can arrange this order in whichever way you like. Now, Xavier listed the set of all letters of the word library in these four ways. Can you tell me which of the way is correct? Let's check the first one. Here, what mistake do you notice in this way? He has used a small letter to denote the set. But we have learned we try to use a capital letter to denote a set. One more mistake is there in this set. He has used the letter R twice. That means he has not removed the duplicates from this set. So this way is wrong. Now what about the second way? Here he has used the capital letter to denote the set. So this is correct. He has put commas between the set. This is also correct. But the same mistake he has done here. He has not removed the duplicate of R. He has also forgotten to use curly brackets over here. So this way is also wrong. Now, what about the third one? Here he has used the capital letter to denote the set. He has also put curly brackets. He has remembered to remove the duplicate of R, but he forgot to use commas. We always use commas to separate the elements of the set. So this is also wrong. Now what about the fourth one? Here he has used the capital letter to denote the set. He has also used curly brackets. He has also used comma. He has also re remembered to remove the duplicate of R. So this set contains no duplicates. So this option is absolutely correct. 